Hola a todos and welcome to another Julia video of the channel. Today we're gonna talk about the best of frenemies, Python and Julia. We're gonna see how to call Julia from Python and Python from Julia. But before we move on, one quick tip, if you live in the Netherlands or are passing through Amsterdam, the PyData Amsterdam conference will take place in less than two weeks, September 14 through 16. Go to amsterdam.pydata.org and get your tickets. If you use the code COMMUNITY with a capital C, you get 20% off in your tickets. Go to amsterdam.pydata.org now. There are currently two ways to integrate Python and Julia and Julia in Python. These two main packages are PyCall and Python Call and their corresponding Python package. I have talked about PyCall in a series of blog posts in the past comparing Python being improved by C++ and Python being improved by Julia up to the point that we actually made the Julia code faster than the C++ code in this specific instance. I'm gonna leave the link in the comments so you can check it out. Now I'm gonna talk about the Python call package and the corresponding Julia call package, which are newer. But very briefly, you install Python call and it installs a Python version for you use the conda package to install the packages that you need for python call so here i'm installing python call in this pluto environment i'm using package and i'm saying conda add seaborn and conda add scikit learn so i'm just installing these two packages and here i am calling some code this is julia code as normal essentially i'm creating 100 by 3 matrix with some distribution that depends on whether the data is from the type A or the type B, which is essentially fake data for a classification problem. So if you look at this and you have seen the classification problem before, you probably recognize the Seaborn package that plots all of the three axes and the classes of these points. So the way that we do that, so all the way up to here, this is all just Julia, nothing new. But then we just use PyImport Seaborn to import that Python package. And then we call sns.parplot. And now you're just calling some Python code. So I'm just calling the parplot function from Seaborn. I'm giving it a data frame, but converted using PyTable, which is part of the package that we just installed. So this is how you can easily just use a Python package inside Julia. Down here I have a bit longer example, now using the scikit-learn package. So I'm using scikit-learn.naivebase. I then have the Gaussian NB constructor. I create a classifier and down here I fit this classifier. The input of this classifier is a Julia matrix and a Julia array of integers so it just works and then when i call predict i have a new vector y hat the way that i chose to plot this is again giving it to pair plot i just convert this vector this is a python vector so i convert it to a julia vector using the python function so to use julia from inside python you can just install the julia call package and just pip install julia call you will have access to import main and you can give it a name like jl and you, you can see here that it installs a julia for you so you don't have to worry about that to install julia packages you want to use the julia package package so it's also pip install julia package and then you have to say here julia package dot add it will give the package name and the uh, uuid this might be harder to get but the easiest way will be to just open julia and say add jump and ask for the status and we will list this information for you and when you add your packages you say resolve to get them installed and you can also use a JSON file and list this information on the JSON file, which I ignore here. So we just have a single notebook. So this install this jump and IPOP packages and jump and IPOP, you know, are packages for optimization. So to just show this package working, I'm gonna implement a simple optimization model to find the best investment if I try to base myself on historic information of these five stocks. So this is, is known as the Markovitz model, which is a simple model. So don't use it in your stock selection, but anyway. 
So just so you know, I'm using Wi Fi Nair. So this is all Python. I download closing data from these stocks. I, I'm just plotting for you to see and computing the returns. I have to use the mean value and the covariance matrix just so I can compute the risk and the expected return of this selection. And now we start using Julia. So jl.seval, which is a string evaluation, using jump, using ipopt, and you can say things like model equals model ipopt.optimizer. You could use another syntax here if you try to get the jump value. So jl dot jump and you can just call model directly but then you have to write more so this was just simpler not gonna say it's faster i don't know one way to pass data around if you want to pass the actual data to julia you say jl dot the variable name equals data and then it this data that is just a python thing is now also a julia thing i'm actually not using this for anything but just so you know the markovitz model needs the mean return the expected return and this covariance matrix and what it does is it has one variable for each one of my stock and i want to minimize the risk so if you don't know this that's fine just this is julia that's the important thing and i i want an expected return here that i'm just saying it needs to be positive these are constraints and here you are investing all of your money and and that's it that's the whole model you optimize this model all of this is julia julia.seval i'm obtaining the value of the allocation and here i'm getting the objective value which is how much risk my selection is on which doesn't matter a lot for us the important part is that i can plot these things now back into python so that's it this is like just a dual insertion in my python notebook now i'm back to python so here i can analyze the solution so this brown curve so it, it had a pretty good result here you can see the allocation it's mostly microsoft stocks and hindsight is 2020 so please don't use this for your investment this is not investment suggestion or advising of any kind calling julia from python python from julia is a great way of expanding your horizons so julia currently has this lack of libraries issue that people keep bringing up but one quick way to solve this is to just import the packages from python or from other languages you can also do the same for r or java c fortran whatever many languages and in the other hand, if you have some code that could benefit from some speed up, but in a higher level language, you could just try using Julia instead of the traditional C++ integration that Python does frequently. I have also talked today about two key things. I have talked about machine learning and I have talked about optimization. Don't worry if you do not get the specific topics. If you want me to talk more about those things, let me know in the comments. Now I have a question for you. What other kind of integration would you think is, is very important for Julia? Do you think the Python integration that we have seen today is enough to convince people to use Julia more coming from Python? Do you think companies can adopt Julia if you can use machine learning and you can use notebooks and that's it? You can just bring up the Julia good stuff, but keep using Python? Let me know what you think in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching today's video and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click the bell button and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.